Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Faithism Project podcast. My name is Alan Katz. I have always been grateful to Hebrew School for making me the atheist that I am today. And my name is Randy Lovejoy, and I am a pastor who has stepped outside of the church in order to help people struggling with the church to go deeper in the faith. And I am grateful to be here with Alan, my friend and atheist, to talk about how to be a better. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, 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 how to be how to be a better Christian, how to be a better atheist in, in times as challenging as these. How to be a better human, because good grief, you know, I mean, we are all being stretch thin we're all be you know having different buttons pushed and we've really got to do some serious thinking about how are we going to react to this thing and, and and not just in a passive way but how can we intentionally be better people as we walk through all this stuff you know in it is a strange thing to be to be you know the thing to be hit with if we're not in ukraine we're not being bombed for no reason the right. the right. the the most galling thing about this is that it's happening for no reason. There's there's literally no reason for this to be visited upon the Ukrainians. It's and it's just having to watch. You know, I mean, part of what makes it tough from kind of our seats is is we're spectators. Um, you know, and 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 it's kind of like you're you're in the Colosseum watching, and and you don't really want to watch but there it is. And, you know, it's like, well, I could get up from my seat and jump in there, but not sure that's going to do anything. And, uh, but do I have to just sit here and watch this thing, you know, unfold? Is there something else I can do? What's, what's also really disconcerting is the, the, is how familiar. Yeah. How, how terribly familiar it is because it's, it's, it's a replay of, well, this is a replay of Spain, 1936. Mm -hmm. And it all feels like a lead up to World War II. And in Spain in 1936, as in Ukraine, there are outsiders pouring into the country in, you know, to fight on Ukraine's behalf. Yeah. By the same token, uh, perversely, Putin is also bringing in mercenaries of his own mm -hmm. uh, to do some yeah. of the to it, do some it, of the, the, the dirtiest of the dirty work. Yeah. And, and if, you know, it's it. <laughs> It, it's kind of like I was talking to somebody today and they said, you know, I, I'm just kind of tired of living in uh, historical moments. You know, it's like, I've had enough now. Thank you. I'm good on the historical moments. Let's just go back to a really boring existence for a while. We, we, um, how good we had it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, uh, thankfully, I, the pandemic numbers have still stayed down and it seems like we haven't had any variants that are, are knocking us out at this point. So I mean, I mean, we can be thankful for that, but um, but think of this. I, I I just wrote a blog post about this today, about the the string of of wretchedness that has yeah. that has befallen the human beings alive on this planet at this time, mm -hmm. and it has befallen really the entirety of 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 human beings and animals too, in some cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes, the, the the pandemic has stretched across species. It it is it is a, a staggering how it it bound us together. Yeah, in uh, in a way, and then when you look at all the the, the political mm -hmm. uh, division between right and left all around the world, the 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 fact that there are right wing reactionary forces reacting to yeah to a degree to the fact that there there are populations moving all around the world because in you know because of war but also because of climate and suddenly because people are moving around the world people who live have lived in certain places for a long time are not are not comfortable with this and understandably so and so the whole world seems to be on edge uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and, I mean, it was interesting. I was at a at a restaurant yesterday, which that in itself was interesting. Uh, didn't have to wear a mask and oh, sat in a restaurant. Where'd indoors. you go? Where'd you go? Um, you know, La Grande Orange in in uh, Pasadena. I don't know if you've been there. Uh, uh, I've never been there. Huh. Great English muffins. Oh my gosh, I had a hamburger on an English muffin there. Just had this craving, so it was really good. But anyway, our waitress there 
we noticed her accent was slightly different. You know, it wasn't a non-English accent, but it was like English with a twist. And so Cheryl said to her, you know, okay, we're wondering where you're from. Your English is great. We just, where's the accent? She said, well, my mom's from Chicago. My dad's from Germany. And I grew up in Namibia. And we're like, okay, all right then. And because we were like, it did sound a little South African yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, English and she said, I lived in Cape Town for a while. She said, I've been in L.A. for seven months. And I said, wow. So you got here like in the middle of the pandemic. She said, yeah, I was to visit a, a relative and then I stayed. And she said, so I don't really feel like I've gotten to know L.A. very much because it's been pretty closed down. But then she said, but I really miss Namibia. And it's so polarized here that, you know, I just want to go hang out with my friends in Namibia and just relax for a little bit. Um, and, and I just thought, well, that's, that's kind of fascinating to hear that perspective as well, that, you know, it's, I told her, I said, you know, if you'd come here maybe five or six years ago, I think it would have been turned down significantly, but it's just uh, it, it really is, turned it is up. It, it is. Yeah. And, and so it was just fascinating to me that, 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 you know, she was even feeling like, you know, I've only been here seven months, but I'm kind of need a breather uh, from this place. And it was sort of like, yeah, I know the feeling. There are times where I just want it's like, can I just go somewhere where there isn't such you, intense you, you, uh, you, battles between right and left just to relax, even if it's just for a short time? Um, you feel but like I think the, that's, you know, sorry. Do you, do you feel like the, 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 this war has made it worse? or alleviate uh, at all no i actually don't I, I i feel like it's definitely got its interpretations on either side but i sort of think it surprised everybody so much that that we're off our polarized games for a little bit now, now that's not to say we're not figuring it out very quickly and, and and making it play into our continuous uh uh battle uh that we seem to be living off of these days um, you know, so it, it'll get shaped in that direction. And it certainly is in bits and pieces. But I think it's Ukraine's kind of scary enough with Putin and all this, that it's kind of shaken it up a little bit. And, and it's also shifted our priorities um, and thrown us into some crazy turmoil. You know, and, and, and I think that, you know, that there is a there is a way that that could shake us out of yeah. some of our, I, I don't know, you know, it's, we'll see. Well, it's existential but. because what, what, uh, what, what Vladimir Putin does to the game is he, he takes away all the rules. Yeah. I you mean, know, he doesn't play by the rules. He's not interested at, in the rules. So, at you at know. this point, you know, if he's, if he's making the the illusions to chemical weapons, it's because he likely intends to use them. He's he's already alluded to to nukes. If you're if you're Vladimir Putin, hey, you've already committed atrocities and war crimes. What what more can they do to you if you well, drop a bomb? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think I think I think right. I, I think there's always that's part of what makes it so tough watching not not just watching Ukrainians and knowing oh more people are going to die today. Um, and let's watch. Uh, but but it's it's also uh, okay. There's this guy that seems to have figured out how to have so much power in his own country that nobody can stop him. And it's kind of like our whatever he decides is going to have massive implications to our existence. Yes, to every, um, every and, human you know, being. He, yeah, he, and he goes and, and launches a, a nuclear weapon. You know, right. the fallout from that alone, we have no idea what right. the implications of that would be. Right. And then and then, you know, you, you see, like, even when we when we pulled back from purchasing oil and gas from them, now it seems that China and she are getting, you know, building an even stronger relationship with with Russia and picking up those sales. And so it's like, well, there's some more alignments going on globally that could have a long-term impact as well. And what does that mean? And, you know, and he's another strong man who, you know, just recently got things shifted around so he can serve the rest of his life, it seems. And, and, and um, you know, and so these are two countries that, that are not small potatoes on the global scene. And, 
you know, and it, it's like, all right, uh, are we starting to see a little uh, Hitler Mussolini replay? Obviously very different. And yet, you know, the two of them were attracted to each other because of their, you know, their kind of dictatorial power and, and mm. all of that, you know, so it's just like, well, where's this going to go? Well, and the, I think the, 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 the problem for me related to our topic is that we don't know where it's going to go. And it's really not up to us where it's going to go. So the, the real question, it's not even necessarily up to how we voted our U.S. ballot box as to how. Oh, it no, goes. no, no. This, it's, is, this, is, this is beyond this that. Beyond that. Far, so far beyond that, that puts us into a new realm. It's not unfamiliar because with the pandemic, we were helpless too, you know, for a time. So there's a similar feeling, I think, of, okay, I can't change the things that are on the horizon that I'm yes, worried about. Yeah, the world is spinning off in, into a yeah. literal uncontrollability. What are we to do as, as, as individuals yeah. just trying to keep more to our lives? Right. That's, that's the thing. Do we get so caught up in all of yeah. this stuff that we have no control over that's going to drive us nuts? Or uh, do we come yeah. up with a different plan and say, okay... I can't control this, but I'm going to be better at what I can control. The, you know, the, the thing we really wanted to talk about today, and, and we, we kind of started as how to be a better, but it really is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How does one's Christianity, how does one's atheism right. help right. one navigate, uh, navigate, uh, uh, boy, experiences, nothing can possibly prepare you for yeah I, you know the only the only plus i can see out of this is that you know i, I used to look at our our parents generation as the greatest generation uh, my, my parents generation now being a baby boomer myself my, my parents were of the greatest generation they 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 lived through the the second world war and and that made them rather heroic you know the baby boomers we were just a a, a lazy bunch of bastards <laughs> you know, com complaining, protesting the war, you know, God, yeah, useless, yeah. useless, yeah. useless. Uh, and now suddenly, before we are carted off this mortal coil, we are we are getting our, is this our shot at redemption? Right, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, I think that's that that really is part of it is, you know, it's related to what legacy are we going to leave? Hey. Yeah. Um, and again, we're yeah. not in control, yeah. but we are in control of some parts of our lives. So, yeah. so, I mean, so what do you think? I mean, in terms of from, from, uh, you know, your perspective and an atheist perspective, what, how do you approach this kind of a uh, time in history? I mean, what do you do? How do we, how do we survive it? How do we come out yeah. the other end? Right. With, right. with as much of our as many of our faculties intact and as much of our decency intact yeah it would not we this will resolve one way or the other it, my gut is that this the 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 end of this war was was already decided the moment that putin crossed the border he was going to lose this because mm -hmm. hey sure even if let's say your, your military performed to perfection, yet you could possibly have taken Ukraine, holding Ukraine, <clears throat> holding Ukraine right. is something else entirely. Yeah, that I, would I, consume you and destroy yeah. you. Well, hey, I was listening to somebody. That said, yeah, that, right. Because I was listening to somebody that said they, you know, a, a Russian expert, and they said, yeah, they're, they're certain that Putin did not at all expect the nationalism, uh, patriotism, whatever you want to call it, that the Ukrainians have had. And he expected that they, they want to be, be welcomed in. They want yeah. to be free. They like, right. they like democracy. They, they don't want Vladimir that. Putin's boot on their throat, strange yeah. as it may seem. Well, and that's, again, I think he's, he is not seeing reality. And No, 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 and, no. And, and, and I don't think that apparently so. the pandemic was really... You know, he's isolated to begin with, and the right. pandemic isolated him even further. In, in terms of how we get out of this, the, the, people, the people who scare Vladimir Putin more than anyone, it's not us, and it's not even the Ukrainians, it's the people around him. Yeah. It's the high command who he has to rely on to do all this. And, you know, at any point, that's what every strong man fears. It's when... It's when the, the, the armed forces realize we're just being 
thrown into a, we're just being ground up in a meat grinder here. Yeah. And at some point it's just survival. Suddenly the, the impulse will run up the command chain and a von Stauffenberg will emerge as it did during World War II and during, from the German high command. And hey, but for the, the width of a table leg, von Stauffenberg came within a table right. leg of succeeding right. in, in killing Hitler. And who knows what a different world we would be in now. Right. But, but right. for the width of a table leg. And probably something like that will happen because, you know, it, it has never before happened in the history of the world that economic war has been declared on one country the way that the whole right. world has declared economic war on Russia. They, their war machine can't resupply itself. You know, and I think that's, that's thinking further out. One of the things I think we're going to have to be careful of um, because of looking back at Germany and, you know, is to make sure that um, on the assumption that you're right and, and, you know, Russia is defeated or Putin is defeated, we've got to make sure not to um, enjoy the victory too much uh, on the backs of the Russians because that's the way to breed future yeah. problems. Is, is, is um, there a Versailles treaty in, in Russia's future? Yeah, I, you know, because I mean, even in the South, in this country, you know, I, I think, you know, the reconstruction, there were some problems in the reconstruction that continue to, to cause trouble today. And so I think we hopefully we'll have some people that are, are wise, <laughs> which seems like it's asking a lot these days for some reason, but hopefully they're emerging uh, in the midst of this, this. I mean, that's my other hope is that we'll see some soup, some strong younger leaders emerge from this, but we shall see. Well, uh, but, well, but well, you know. Look, speaking rather hopefully, because, because yeah. I, honestly, I, I think at the end of the day, there will be hope should, should rise Phoenix-like from the ashes here. And yes, there will be a strong impulse certainly coming from, 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 uh, um, uh, to, from Ukraine to, you know who's going to pay for the rebuild yeah of their whole right. country of their infrastructure of their cities yeah who's going to pay for that i mean it, it shouldn't cost ukraine it you know really and truly it this should come out of when you consider all of the vast wealth held by putin and the oligarchs around him right right you know surely right. you know it, it's not hard to to it's not as if russia you know putin is not when we talk about legitimate heads of state, Vladimir Putin doesn't really, he's not an elected, a, he's not like he was elected freely and fairly the way that we think of it. And his right. hold on power is not the way that we think of it. And yeah. he's, he's really much more, he's not a president the way that we think of it. He's really much more an organized criminal with a government at his disposal. Mm -hmm. And in that way, yeah, I mean, uh, what he's been doing, why he is possibly the richest man in the world is he has stolen the money that belongs to Russia and Russians. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, if, if, if someone were to take out Putin, they would be doing Russia a favor because he's been stealing from them. That's, that's where his wealth has come from. He has robbed right. his own country blind. So, but what I'm hearing it, as a beginning is to, to, to kind of the, the question is, is number one, you see an end to. Putin. I do. I do. And so by kind of looking back at history looking at what his strategies are and that kind of thing. Okay. This is a limited period of time. Um, by of necessity, one way or the other. And even if he launches something that's even more, the potential is devastating. I mean, it could certainly uh, just, just the calculus. Russia doesn't want to do a land war against NATO. Right now, they've got 70% of their forces committed in, in Ukraine. If, if NATO right. were to launch, oh, Russia wants no part of this, and, and we don't want any part of this either. Okay. And, and it, right. the shortest distance between these two points, it is. It is someone inside the Russian command structure the very people who, who Putin fears more than anyone for the very reason he should fear yeah. them. And, and that so is what how does exactly that will happen. Of, how does that impact the way you're going to approach okay. the time that we're in? If what right. we're saying is, 
Because I think other people might be worried, kind of like this could go on forever, or this could last 20 years or whatever. Or but you're you're saying there there is a limit to this yeah. at some point. Yes, and yes, yes. Him. And 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 I think the 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 thing that will win versus the thing that will lose, and the thing that will win is is really is 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 a love for freedom and human decency. Mm, mm. And the thing that will lose is this uh, this much uglier side of human behavior. And I think part of what, what what's, you know, a lot of the conscripts who are dying in Ukraine, the Russian conscripts, they have no idea why they're there. Mm. They mm. were lied to, as is, uh, since every last bit of outside information is being uh, cut off from Russia, this entire population is being lied to. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Our problem is not with, with, with really the majority of Russians, if, if they knew what the rest of the world knew, literally, the, what the rest of the yeah. world knew, uh, the truth would set them free. So do you see, are, would you say that in some ways that um, peace or at least calm or, or lack of war, let me put it that way, it is more of a is more the constant and that these kinds of situations are momentary, you know, momentary bursts of, of violence, um, but then they go away and we go back to more of a, of a calm of some kind. Yeah, I, or, I, I, I think reality is more like the Ukrainians just wanting to live their lives in peace and suddenly okay. something beyond their control jumps down their throats mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is this is, seems to be our cycle here you know this is this is a very much a repetition look this this is this is not unconnected to world war ii and everything yeah, that happened right. there this is all part of the same perverse european kabuki now just think for a minute though i mean because i think that that's an interesting take and i think that that the the Interesting point to me there is if Zelensky had left like other leaders have done yeah. in somewhat yeah, similar yeah, circumstances, yeah. Yeah. then, you know, what would we be doing now? <laughs> what would we be talking about now? Nothing. Uh, he would have taken the country and that would have been it. What, but, but, but Zelensky was, was quite the wild card. I mean, yeah. God, who, who would, who, you wouldn't cast him. You wouldn't have right. cast it this way. It, and ironically, he's an actor. I mean, he might have been in Bordello of Blood if he'd oh you know, been God. in the U.S. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, no, um, well, you know, but that, I mean, started. yeah, you know, and I think that that's really interesting. I mean, he had to be willing to take a stand that, I mean, he, he knows still that he could easily be killed. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Apparently, there have been you know, somewhere in, in vicinity yeah. of two hundred attempts on his life that they have, you know, yeah. they have, and he is not hiding. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. But but at the same time, it it took that act to, you know, I I, I want to compare that to say uh, France when Germany came in. You know, it, it it's like there was somehow there was a will to fight that he spearheaded. Yeah that has given them a resistance that yeah, same yeah. with France, you know, cause France had a strong military when, when Nazi Germany came in, they just, they didn't have the will to fight. And so it collapsed quickly. And then the Vichy you regime know, came in and, and I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but that's, that's, that's historically, that's, that's not, that's not out of character for French people. I mean, God, you could look back at the hundred year war and there were there were French knights who would flip sides depending upon whether the English were winning or the French were winning at that point of the Hundred Year War. Hmm. So flipping sides, you know, because it was expedient, is right. is not is not out of character. It's it's. But you know, to me, it's like, well, what what can we learn from Zelensky yeah. and the Ukrainian response to this? Because I, I think, oh gosh, integrity. Yeah. Because look, 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 look what it did. He he stood yeah. up to something much bigger. It's David v. Goliath. It really and truly right. is. Because the rest and, of the world, you know, no matter what we're going to do, given that he that that Putin has nuclear weapons, and given the dependence upon Russia for energy, 
you know, the response was going to be somewhat muted by the rest of the world. And so it really was incumbent upon Ukraine to make this something, you know, something more than just another Crimea or something, right? Well, uh, by so, comparison, hey, by very recent comparison, Afghanistan, we we expected the 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 armed forces and the government of Afghanistan to not do what they did, which is right. get on an airplane and leave the country. Right. You know, right. That, that dissolved like like it was built of nothing. Well, and, and awesome. then what's, you know, and what's left in its place, you know, at, at, at least from the reports I've gotten, I mean, it sounds like their economy's falling apart. The, the role of women in the society has gone back, snapped back that, you know, so, so it's just, it's, it's, you know, what, that's, I think one of the things we can do is try to be good students of what's going on well, wouldn't that and, be nice? and try to see what here, we here. can pull out of it, you know, and I do think it hey, shows how much. Yeah, I mean, courage can make a massive difference. Um, but 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 let, let's yeah. think about this for a minute. Though. What about so you've got the courage of Russians who've protested and been arrested, right? Yeah. But that's almost feels like they're the the courage is there, but you've got to wonder about the strategy versus. If Zelensky you, and the Ukrainians, there's courage and somehow there's a way that their actions are actually making a significant difference. I, I don't know, you know, and I'm, I'm just having, thinking. Having I'm never talking. lived in, a, in, a, in an authoritarian regime right. Right. And, and felt the need to resist, I, I can't, I can't, I, 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 I have no experiences to, to compare it to and therefore no advice to give them. Sure, but I just it's, it's you know what I mean. I, I but yeah. but by the same token, I would also understand you know when you're in that situation, you kind of know when there are numbers out there and you have a silent, seething mass of people, and so yeah, if suddenly a couple of you step outside onto the street and then suddenly a few more, you begin to feel where your power is. It's not in you as the individual; it is in you the, as a collective. Right. statement of the popular will but it's almost like in in those authoritarian situations like I, I remember when albania finally fell or you know opened up again uh there was some book i can't remember the not name now but there's a book about it and and it felt similar to some of solzhenitsyn stuff and all that it, but you know it, it's kind of like how do you it seems like when you get into an authoritarian situation like that where there is a strong person in ruling it that there's a one strategy, but I guess the more important thing would be, is there something you can do to stop uh, a country that's moving toward authoritarianism? If you're a citizen of that country, is there something you can do? Like, is there something you can point you know, Russians could have done? I mean, not to blame them. I'm just trying to think it through. Like, well, is there a way, something that could have been done to keep them from getting to this point to where their leader is such that he does whatever he wants to do, and then you 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 try to call out, and then you get arrested. Co you know? Corruption makes it hard, and right. So the, the the Soviet system was rather corrupt, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know the the Russia that emerged, it was organized crime that really was the strongest force that emerged from 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 the death you know, from the old Soviet Union. It was organ oh my god the way Russian organized crime spilled out from the Soviet Union into the world. It, it's still that's a huge blight upon the world to this day. There's so much organized crime, uh, Russian organized crime money in 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 uh, in London, mm -hmm. in, in in America. Yeah. Uh, I, gosh, who knows how how much property it owns here in in Los Angeles? It it has to right. be laundered somewhere, you know. Well, and um, that's you know it it you know there's a. Um, there's a short story by Solzhenitsyn when, that, that is called uh, Matrovnya's House. Um, and it's a great story. And, and, and so spoiler alert, if, if you're listening and you want to read it, then don't listen. But, but it basically, you know, it talks about some peasants in Russia and this woman who's 
life doesn't go particularly well. You know, it's it's like a lot of the Russian literature, <laughs> you know, life's pretty gray and depressing and and all of that. But at the end of it, you know, when she dies, he says something about to the effect that, you know, what people didn't realize was that people like Matrovnya are the ones that make the world go round. And it was this idea, because I think that's one of the things we should consider is, is it the people that step up and make a loud noise and get the media buzz that are the ones that are really moving the world long term? Or, and this I think was what Solzhenitsyn was trying to point to, or, or is it really the everyday people that are living their lives, uh, not necessarily successfully, but they're living their lives with integrity and with care and with love that really long term make the biggest difference in the world? You know, How do we um, make the world safe for them? Yeah, yeah. How and, do we... How do we, so, so that they can continue to, to do their, so that they can be the cogs inside the wheels that make the wheels go round. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I you know, but, but I, th I think even more deeply, though, one step deeper than that is, are they the ones that really matter the most long term? Or, you know, because we're always focused on the people you're, with you're, the power, the money, the violence. You're asking blessed are the meek, right? You're asking, will the meek inherit the earth? Yeah, yeah. Like that's, you that's know, the uh, are, okay. are they the ones? I, I that, see you know. through, I see right through you. Will the meek inherit the earth? That's the question you're asking. Well, because it's, it's kind of like, again, I go back to 9-11 and before the newscasters got hold of it, you know, there was just, I remember watching on TV, there was just some running video. I mean, it, it was so surprising. They got cameras there, but nobody knew what to say, right? So you're just watching and you're definitely seeing all the people trying to escape all of the dust and, and everything falling in their, you know, business suits and dresses and things, you know. But the part that caught my attention was all the people that were running in the opposite direction, right into all of the crud. And, you know, many of them had health issues or died later because of it, but they were running into it. And it was kind of like, wow, OK, these are the people that like actually make. Make the world go around, you, you know, I mean, you, you have the, the, the terrorists, you have the people that fund the terrorists, you have the airplanes, you have the office buildings, you know, with important people making big decisions. But then it's like, but it's kind of like those first responders that they seem like the key people right now, you know, before, again, before, before the, the uh, newscasters and politic, you know, politicians got in to begin to define everything according to them and their way of seeing things. It was kind of like, I think I'm seeing something important here about life. Um and so, I mean, what, what part of why I bring this up is, as as an, an encouragement for all of us that if, yes, we're not the ones that, uh, you know, need to make a decision about are we going to take Putin out or not, because we'll see him tomorrow. You know, we're not the ones that are in Ukraine. Uh, we're not even the ones that are trained uh, it, it soldiers so that we can think, well, do I go join them in Ukraine or do I stay here? Right. So. And we're not even into the politics. You know, we can't make uh, the Biden administration do X or Y. You know, we, we, we can say something to them, but we can't make those decisions. But the point I'm trying to make is what if what if, though, our continuing to be to have integrity and care and concern for all of the people we connect with on a daily basis in the middle of all this junk is actually the most important stuff going on right now. Wouldn't, doesn't that create in a, a kind of expand, ever expanding net of care and concern that you know, the more people that, that it reaches out to, the more people right. that it sweeps up into its care and concern, who also then extend their cares and concerns. Yeah, it, it, it is. If, if... And, and regardless of how long it takes for Putin to fall, um, that will still matter. That will still be important. Um, 
you know, it's it's not like, well, I got to wait for this thing to be figured out with with Putin and Ukraine and then no, I can get on with my life. It's like, no, 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 no. It, it, it's, it's the sentiment of we are the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, but but there's something even though they misquoted the Bible in that song, but that's OK. I, you know, I'll, I'll try to let that go. But they, they said when Jesus turned stone into bread and it's like, no, that way he was tempted by Satan to turn stone into bread and refused. So I thought it was pretty awesome that they're trying to do this great song with everybody. And then it's like, uh, misquote, misquote. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> you, you, you still feel bitter about it. I, I, I said, well, it's just like, get it right. It's right there. Everybody's got a Bible. It's like, it's hard to find a Bible. I'm going to flip, I'm going to flip there. up into the book of revelations and I'm going to yeah. show you where you're wrong. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll let it go. But it's just like, come on now, you know, just just check your work. That's all I'm asking. Just check your work. Make sure it's really in there like that. So but no, I you know, it just I think that's the thing that strikes me. And I mean, I'm drawn as, as much as the next person to wanting to be the big influential, make lots of, you know, make a big impact, make a big splash. But it's just kind of like the people that in different parts of my life and times of my life and parts of the world the people that have been the most impressive are, are like prisoners and, and, you know, peasant farmers and, and all of that. Those are the people that I've met and they're like, Oh my gosh, they are impressive people, you know? And, and yeah, I, you know, I met John McEnroe once and, and he seemed like he was 20 feet tall, but it, it wasn't the same kind of impressive as, um, these people that it was like, okay, there's something going on inside these people that is like, off the charts amazing and i wonder if that's kind of part of what we're the potential we all have as humans but very few of us get there you know um we, we are way. witnessing actual heroism yes people yeah. standing up and willing to die for for yeah. something that they act that they believe in well There's, and even one couple there was this great little interview of like a couple in kiev and they were young and and a little on the nerdy side and that sort of thing, you know, but, but, but they were interviewing them, you know, and they're like, well, yeah, we, you know, we have lots of friends that left, but we just decide we, we really can't go. And, and, you know, what about, what about our friends and, and our friends that have left? What about their pets, you know? And so we're taking care of them, you know, and you're, you're just, you know, wow, that's different. But again, to me, it's like, that's important. You know, it, it's not the big newsworthy, whatever, but it's like, oh yeah, there's some people that are saying, hey, take your family and go. We're staying here and we'll take care of your pets that you are beloved by the family. And, and, and we'll look out for other people that are still here. And, you know, it's like, that's, that's amazing. I mean, they're not, they're not saying we're going to go take up arms and shoot people, but they're saying we're willing to risk staying here to continue to show care. Um, and it's like, wow, that's, that's gutsy stuff. And I just wonder if in the long term, those aren't the acts that are actually the most significant uh, in the long run. You, you, you are touching upon the same hope that I'm, that I'm, I was talking about earlier, which is from the ashes of this awful gross inhumanity, a, a new respect yeah. for for humanity, for how we need to treat each other. Yes. yes. If we're going to survive into the future together, survive pandemics and, and all the other issues that we're going to continue to have with each other, it, it certainly is going to have to start with a little more decency. Yes. And, and, and man, you know, if, if, they, if, if this situation could kind of reset the political conversation in the U.S. with just turning it down just a few notches and then saying you know what this is actually more important than what we've been fighting for whatever that is i'm not sure what people are after sometimes but that there's actually something more significant and more important and we need to talk together and figure this out man that would be I, I, incredible uh, I'm... that would be incredible this is going to be a hope for the best expect the worst i think that's going to get a lot darker before it gets lighter well but, you know but, we'll I, also, see. But, I, I'm, you but know. I also think that there's a light at the end of that tunnel too 
I do. I'm glad you do. I mean, I'm I'm starting to feel like I'm I'm uh, counseling a a married couple that uh, fighting used to bother them, but now fighting is their relationship, and and it's just destructive. I am, and, and I feel like in the U.S., yeah. it's kind of like. Yeah, we used to have right and left. Now we just have a fight with each other. And that's the only reason we relate. The only reason we inhabit in the same nation is so that we can yell at each other and tell each yeah. other how bad they are, or you yeah. are, or actually yeah. tell other people that think like us how bad the other side is um, and and build our alternate realities. So, you know, yeah, if I'm glad you see light at some point, I'm just not sure how, unless there's, unless we start getting some landslide political landslide election results down the road or something. I, I just, I'm not really sure how we're going to get there uh, as an entire nation. I, I just, uh, but again, to me, maybe the more important issue is go find people that are on a different, uh, you know, in a different place than you on certain issues and just get to know them and show them some kindness and some love, you know, and the, the, see what happens. The strange thing is, is that what is happening outside our borders is doing, and I think the perversely, the longer it goes on, I, I think the more it will break down some of the barriers that have been erected between us. I, yeah, I, I you know, I perversely, hope so. Perversely. And or, you know, I, I would also hope that at some point, a lot of everyday people would just say enough, <laughs> enough, you know, quit trying to shove us into one side or the other, keeping us mad, help it, you know, enough. Why don't we actually have some people that lead so well that we want to follow you, not because we're afraid of what the other side is going to do, but because you actually have ideas that make us want to follow you, you know? So, you know, and I don't know how that happens in our present situation, but but I do hope that at some point there's kind of that tipping point or whatever people use for that, where, where it's just kind of like, okay, this isn't working for us anymore. We're done. Stop it. And then somebody tries to start it up again. You're like, no, <laughs> moving on. You know, I would love the, to see something the, like that. The, 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 the nice thing as it were that, that Vladimir Putin has given to the world is a villain. Yes. Yeah. He has reminded us. He has, I think, he has given you know, us uh, yeah. another Hitler, but but a villain who really, for the most part, we can most of us agree. All right. That's where villainy lives. Yeah. And. Yeah. It, all right. So that's the beginning of common ground. Yeah. No, I, you know, I mean, I think that's like the impact that he's had in terms of NATO's mm -hmm. relationships thus far. Certainly seems to have united NATO and woken up some people. A real um, catalyst you know, in a lot of forward. ways he, he never yeah. expected. I, I don't right. think. Right. But then when you're that cut off from the rest of the world, when you isolate yourself, yeah, yeah you're not going to get the best advice. And that's probably another good thing to remind all of us, because, you know, I'm a lot happier being isolated than I was before the pandemic. And I need to start rebuilding those habits of getting out there more because um, isolation is, is we're not made to be isolated. You're here. Uh, that's just You're not, here. you know, we don't grow as well um, as people, you know? Um, so I think that's another thing we can as, kind of- As Russia is about to learn. It's, yeah. it's not good yeah. to be isolated. You want to be right. out with the rest of the world and Russia right. does, because this yeah. is not about Russians. Yeah. And and we want them to be because they are they're a part of the world community that, you know, this strange human beings, it seems we in America is 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 the example when you throw us all together and, and you mix us all up together. We produce the most amazing things together. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's that's why America is a remarkable place. Mm -hmm. We are the testing ground for what happens when all the when all the countries of the world work together. Yeah amazing stuff happens and, 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 and it's almost like you know it, it's almost better if we're just randomly throwing thrown into a room and we don't know who stands where on different issues and we just actually have to get to know each other and oh, and, and then we come up with amazing stuff you know so so i agree i mean that part is hopeful i think if 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 we can get back to 
just saying, hey, we're all human beings who are citizens in this particular country. And so therefore, what are we going to do? You know, then it, it, it'd be fun again, you know, but it, but it's like, we've got to get off our high horses though. Um, you know, and, and I mean, I, yeah. And, and just quit, you know, I remember talking to a filmmaker years ago and I was talking to the guy, you know, like, well, what, what are you, you know, what are you excited about filmmaking? And as we had the conversation, I kind of realized he was really excited that he was going to get a really loud, uh, loud uh, mouthpiece or whatever. That's not the word. But anyway, um, bullhorn, I guess. Megaphone. To, to promote his point of view sure. through film. And to me, it was kind of like, wow, is that really all you're aiming for? You know, because what I would hope is that you're going to actually develop some films that would make people think out of the box and, and, and maybe come up with ideas they hadn't thought of. But it's just as we talked, it was like, oh, you're just going to push your particular side and try to get more people on your team. And, and, and it was just like, that's just kind of a low standard to me for art, especially. I mean, if it's going to be any kind of art, the, the great art is art that just kind of blows your mind. You know, it's like, oh, my gosh, this is way outside of what I've thought before. And, and I, I hope... I just hope we you know can what do the that problem is, Ra- You know what the problem What's is, that? Randy? What it What's always that? is, it's the money changers in the temple forecourt. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that the kind of limits what you want to do. If we could take um, greed out of the human equation, we'd have our problems solved. <laughs> you, you asked a question early, earlier, will, 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 good, will, it, will the meek inherit the earth? Well, if we can eliminate greed, yes. Otherwise, all they'll get is the dirt, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, and I think that's one of the big I differences. I that bombshell. Yeah, exactly. That is one of the big differences that Christianity brings in a way how that can happen. But we won't talk about that now. We'll leave that as a little that's, teaser. That's a, a whole other. But that's right. That's right. But good talking with you, Alan. Uh, well, you always know, a and, pleasure. And, you uh, know, and I love your your hopefulness in the midst of this um so uh you know i think that's that's important that's a really important part of walking through tough times the the point of the exercise is to make the world a better place despite itself <laughs> sure in feels like of, that in that spite of itself sure feels in like spite that. of itself yep anyway thank you everybody we'll yeah we'll thanks everyone see you next time and uh, courage that's right courage courage yep